ETE, Emhatep, Sini, Sinet, Ankwasta, Jed, Ankuja, Seneb, Dua, 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 one more time. Dua for listening and tuning in uh, to another episode of Praise the Divine. Uh, and of course, don't forget to go to our website. I know you see the old website here, www.kimmedempire.com. We're no longer there. We're at praisethedivine.org. So I've let this one go. And I picked up praise the divine.org, even though I can still grab this one, you know. So uh at praise the divine.org, you can find all your spiritual needs uh in video form. I'll start to put some lessons on there as well. And if you go into the uh per ankh, you'll find in the upper left hand corner the virtues of Ma'at course, which I think everybody should take. You need to take the virtues of Ma'at course so you understand Ma'at. So you can start thinking in Ma'at fashion, so you can start to be Ma'at Keru, true voice, and understanding the Ramech lifestyle. Today, I got my brother Kofi Pisces with me, man. Kofi, brother Kofi, and Metepson, what's going on with you? Not much, man. Peace, peace, peace to the family, man. Just in here, man, trying to get my learn on. Got my pen and paper out. I suggest everybody else get their pen and paper out, too. I see my brother Sutek Karu. I see Soul Power in the piece. I see the Orthodox Moor in the piece. We about to go in today. First and uh, foremost, uh, the reason for doing the show, as you can see, is called is ancient Egyptian myth science. Is because a lot of times you get tested. You get tested by the Hebrew faction, our brothers who are Hebrew, and you also get tested by our Muslim brothers. You get tested. It is what it is. Um, and a lot of you don't research enough to really know, right? You research to go debate. You want to go get in a fight with your information. That's not what we're about. That's not what we're about. We're good at it. We're definitely good at it. You know, I'd you, it'd be difficult to find an L on me, right? But just because you see debates, that's not what your lifestyle is. This is not the... Oh, what can I Google the fastest, right? That's not, that's what, being a heck in the chair, appraiser of the divine is not about Googling information to go battle someone. It's about understanding the science of your ancestors and venerating them for doing so. Today, I want to give a shout out to Sin and Moot, one of our ancestors who left a lot of this information for us. And because he did so, we are able to understand the stars the way we do today. And astronomers, as well as the astrological, the uh, 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 astrologers, can understand the science of the sky. You can understand what's going on through myth. And you can also understand it in what they call modern science, which is basically myth gone over. So let's begin. Uh, I'm going to share my screen for a brief moment. I want you to see what what we're about to use first and foremost. This way you can get an idea of what the ancients left for you. And you can find it in the tomb of Seti the first on his ceiling. And you can find it in Ramses, I think the fourth or the sixth tomb. In this case, it might be the second as a matter of fact, but you can find it in his tomb on the ceiling as well. Um, it's the form that they call the book of gates. And the other one is called the Amduat. And these are the things that you need to know when it comes to our ancestors and describing and understanding the sky and understanding that myth is more than just myth, it's actual science. So let me pull up the book here for you. This is the picture we'll be using, one of them. Let me pull it up here. I'll enlarge it. So you can see the body of Newt here as you follow my hand. You can see the ground, which represents Seb. We'll cover all of this. You see Father Shu breaking it up. And then you see Kapra or Heru in his young form. You see these plants. We'll get to these. And you see Mother Moot. 
and you see this over here tower where you see you see all the goodies but it's blank it's all blank right now all of this has text in it all of this has text in it in particular the books of jehuti create this particular text and the other text you see forms of the sun here 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 you don't even know it but that's what you're looking at ramses the fourth his text as well see the sun seb shu mother newt mother moot and these flowers appear to be marshes or something huh hmm we'll get into that in a few let me stop sharing for a second stop the share sharing is caring let's get into the text though so y'all can start to understand what's going on so the place we'll start and we're coming from Otto Neugenbauer's book um Otto Neugenbauer had uh, a lot of great pictures of the text which I'm not going to show you a whole bunch of those today but because he got so many pictures of the text and because he was an astronomer as well as a great mathematician he was able to break these things down. He was able to correct Bruggish, another Egyptologist's work. And he was also able to uh, deify and venerate the ancestors. He was able to tell us what Senemut was saying. Um, he wasn't the only one who did this, but he did it well. So we're able to use his information and we're able to actually capitalize and correct some of his information, which I've done, which his partner Richard Parker has done and some others have done. Now, let's go into some of the text so we can start to get you familiar with what's going on. Uh, we're gonna start with that picture, the introduction to Newt. And I'm just gonna kind of break down what's going on there i'm just going to do it in english because to break it down in metal nature then turn around and break it down in english and then turn around. a lot of you don't read metal nature yet which is a shame huh brother Cindy kofi shouldn't they be reading metal nature yeah especially if they're talking about king you talking about king you said no language hello what classes should they be taking <laughs> Well, you know, I don't have a particular choice. I mean, they can either go, you know, like I did and take a uh, Seba Wujawa class or they can take a uh, Riketi Armin class or they can take a uh, Sajani Gata class. Uh, um, another, mm -hmm. uh, um, Mario Beatty. Yeah, Mario Beatty, Infidishi. Yep. Just get in where you can get in at. Get in where you fit in. All right. <laughs> So let's begin, right? Uh, the text starts, the picture of Newt, under A, 1 through 13. And I'm just going to read through it first so we can you can get the idea, and then I'm going to break some things down. So it says, this is the picture on the papyrus, the, finger, the female figure on this position. That is to say her head is in the west, and her hind part in the east is the naturette is the northern sky. It is the picture that it tells about her. In the north, this hand of him who does not reach to the, and there's some pieces broken off, lifts up her souls behind him. Her, some pieces are broken off, and it says, in the east, that is to say the female figure, he calls the hind part to be the beginning. That is to say it is the place of birth or of the circumference of the sky in which Ra never rises. The Ra'et Haret Net Menka, which is under the falcon, or the circumference of the sky in which Ra is accustomed to rise. That is what the text means. Let's stop right there. So we know when we look at a picture of Newt and you see her bent in a certain format over the earth, we know the directions now. It says her head is in the west. It says her hind part is in the east. And what does it say about where Ra rises? It says he rises in the 
east. He sets in the west. And when we talk about the story of Newton Geb later on, a Newton Seb later on, and how they have an argument with each other, and he calls her, he calls her a mother, uh, 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 he calls her a mother beast, <laughs> because he eats her children. It's going to describe the text, and we're going to use mythos to understand the sky. But just in the beginning, so you know, the east is her hind part. And the west is her face. So you know the directions that you're looking at. And Ra never rises where? In her mouth. He never rises in the west by her head. He always rises by her legs, the east. So we're using mythos already to describe the sky. Let's go further. Or oh, before we even go further, let me, let me check the notes in case I wanted to tell you all something. Let me see. Nothing yet. Nothing yet, which is good. Here we go. Let's go to the next page. Let's continue in the text. It says, In the water from which Ra rises, the support which stands under the falcon. Remember, we covered this the other day on the astronomy picture when we covered uh, the Dendera temple. He rises on the support. And that also goes into your temple building. They say rise in the places where the hypostyle hall is, where the supports are. But that's another story. We'll, we're not going to go there today. But just so you know, it says these surroundings of the circumference of the sky, that is to say these waters, which I have mentioned, they go around in the sky. It happens that they travel after he has gone around. A star travels according to the existence of the order of the traveling of the stars. That is to say, those which rise in the sky, these which rise in the sky, all that is to say, all these which rise in the sky, that is to say, the female figure that these are on. What are they saying? They're telling you that they recognize orbits for the planets and stars in the sky. And they recognize that the sun goes around in a circumference in the sky. It says these surroundings of the circumference of the sky. That is to say these waters. And it's also telling you that the noon or the dark matter is watery. So they know that the sky is similar to water. You can't just go up there. You couldn't breathe up there. It's like water. So they know that it's dark matter and they know that it's is dark energy in it, and we'll get to those parts in a minute. But they're giving you a description of the sky, and they're telling you that they know the circumference of the sky. In fact, when they're describing uh, the movement of the stars in a circular motion, the sun rising in the east, they're showing the understanding of orbits. There's, they see the motion of the planets and stars differentiate from each other. And that goes into the text, which we'll get to later as well. But they're establishing star paths because they know they move in circular fashion. So you should give your ancestors more credit than the rest of the world gives them. They never mention their names. They never say what they discovered. They generally start astronomy class with Copernicus. They're noticing objects moving in circular motion, and in, they're, sh uh, they're showing that they move in inward force, acting upon the object, causing its acceleration. This is called uh, centripetal force. And they see this. They're observing this, and they're telling you that by the movement of the circumference, and they go more in depth uh, later. Uh, but the motion of the stars is relative to the sun towards or away from the sun radial velocity. And the motion of perpendicular to the direction of the sun tangential uh, velocity, which is shown when they discuss it moving circularly. So this is basically, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it describes uh, uh, the theory of... Um, not it's not the relativity theory, but the uh, the rel uh, the theory of motion of st uh, interstellar motion is what they're describing at an early time frame. Remember, this is Seti the first. This is Ramses the fourth. That they've already gone over this knowledge. So 
just to kind of give you an idea of what's being explained when they say things of that nature. They've already noticed that stars disappear under the horizon. And they've noticed that stars are moving in circular orbital motion. And when you notice the circular orbital motion, then you're, you're doing a lot without a telescope, without a modern day telescope. Let's go forward. Let's go to the origin of the sun. It says, the texts which are in the picture are according to those which the description of the movements of the stars provides. It's the book of Benin. So this is one of the books of Jehuti. It's called the book of Benin. The text which is between the falcon and the vulture, it is in her southeastern side behind Punt that the Netcher exists. So they're telling you that the, the, the Netcher, Ra, exists and comes up behind Punt. So it's telling you it comes up in the east. The sun comes up in the east. This is their observation of uh, the, the universe right now being told through the text and being told through mythos. Let's go further. He says, it is in the southeastern side behind Punt that the nature exists. It is in the southeastern place of the falcon behind Punt that the nature exists. He says it like a few times. That is to say, the falcon which is on the picture, it is said, it is Ra who is established there. So they say Ra establishes himself by the direction of Punt. Another version, they say, the, the nature was alone without allowing the uh, the Sabot to go to it. And then there's some broken off. And then it says, the form. He is Ra when he rises from the water at morning. He is a falcon coming from noon, says the book Protection of the Bed. Protection of the Bed is another book from Jehuti. You may want to write that down. Now, it says, he is traveling before the lightning of the sky. He begins to travel on the way of, some broken off, and then it says, before the lightning of the sky, that is to say, the nature. It happens that his end is in Rethu Kebet, which is darkness, and his front is in Serek Ithiat, which is light. So they're telling you right now that they notice that suns move through dark energy, and they move through paths of dark matter. And this has not been discussed by anybody who studies ancient Egyptian astronomy or astrology. They don't talk about it. They never, they never named it. So let's look at a few things that, that we've seen. They say the movement of the stars is in their circular motion, the sun rising in the east. They're showing the understanding of orbits. They see the motion of the planets and stars differentiate from each other. Uh, they're establishing star paths. They're talking about the raising up of, of Ra coming from the from Punt, etc. And they're noticing objects in uh, moving in circular motion. And it like I said before, it shows their inward force acting upon an object, causing its acceleration. And this is called centrip uh, centripetal force. Uh, the motion of the stars is relative to the sun toward or away from the sun radial velocity. And the motion is perpendicular to the direction the sun uh, tangent, tangential velocity is shown. And uh, when, when, when we mention terms like that, that means there's a changing of stars position measured by in seconds of arc per year or per century, a.k.a. if you don't know what I'm saying, proper motion is demonstrated in this discussion when they're saying those things and dark energy and dark matter create the sun's path. So that's what they're telling you in the text. When they say sun rises over here, you see the planet spinning in circular motion. And we notice that the sun travels before what they call lightning, which is the dark energy. And it's hind part is in the dark. It's front part is in the light. So they're telling you this, and then they demonstrate it later. Let's go further. It says, the text which is behind the vulture, which is in the picture, her rising, and there's a portion that's missing, but we'll move forward to the, to the other portion. And it says, her rising. It is her rising in the place in which she, the vulture, is opposite the falcon. It is with the place that he speaks is punt 
when she comes from the Netcher's land, says the book, Seeing the Sun's Disc. So the name of the book from Jehudi is called Seeing the Sun's Disc, and they seen the sun rise by a punt. That's what the text is telling you. He knows the embrace of a, sun is broken off, again, it is the rising which she makes over Ra in the morning. And then we go to plate 44, and it says, the text which is under the scarabish, scarabus which is under her thigh. He enters as the scarabus. He comes into existence as he came into existence the first time on earth in primeval time. So they're comparing the sun rising in the morning to what we call Zeptepi, the time before time when the universe was first created. It says, he enters as this scarabus. It is as this scarabus that he enters. It is as this scarabus that he goes to the sky. That is to say the form of copper rare, which is in the picture. That is what the text means. It happens that it is, it is in the form in which he rises in the sky when he is strong, that he goes towards the duat, confronting the rebels. He comes into existence like that of the first time on earth in primeval time. This, the one which some is broken off. It is like coming into existence for. Now, when you hear that, you pick up books like this. So you can start to understand what they're talking about. First, let me go to the picture so we can break this down. Who uh, Who is that, uh, that book? Is that, uh, who is that, Wallace Budge? This is Budge, yeah. This is Legend of the Egyptian Gods. You can also get the Raymond O. Faulkner. You can also get whichever. You can also go right to the text and read these. These are pretty simple to read. If you know uh, Medunetra, you can read them. But you can read this one. Uh, Brother Kofi showed the other one on his show the other day. We held up the myths. The myths. You can also go to the Book of Coming Forth by Day, which we're going to do in a few as well. And... First, I'm going to show, where is it at? Let me see. Can I say something real quick, man, about, about, about that book? Absolutely. We're not, we're basically, you know, with, with those books, Wallace Bud books and a few other books that we show, like try to get as many books as you can that has the session. The session is what we call the hieroglyphs. If you can get those books that have the session, on, you don't have to go by the interpretation of these Europeans, you know, you can actually look at the sesh and then you can read it in yourself because we correct Budge and a few other Egyptologists um, all the time. So very important that you get these books and you're going to uh, make sure you get the uh, the session. So you won't have to go off of what Budge, Faulkner and those other individuals are talking about. Absolutely. As I was saying, learn to read that medal nutshell. So, as you can see on the ceiling of Seti, when uh, it talks about him turning into the winged scarab and going into the sky, this is him right here. This is young Haru. This is him right here. And he's going into the sky by her knee portion, and you notice these flowers over here, the marshes, don't you? That's the visual that you see in the morning. And then when you read, when you read the uh you read the, the mythos, you can see the sun. This is the sunrise. It's by the marshes. These marshes are important. We're gonna get to those in a minute. Motherhood is here. <laughs> Neb moot, Neb moot, right? But these marshes are important. We'll get to them in a second. The reason uh, that what we just read is, is so important is two things. Let me get out of share mode real quick. Where's my share? Let me see. Stop sharing. Here we go. The reason those are important is because of two things. When you start to read the mythos, you start to get the understanding of what they're talking about on the stellas and you start to understand the science. So they're telling you the sun rises by punt and when it rises by punt, it's strong. Heru is strong at that time. You're talking about Heru traveling through the sky and in other mythos like this one here, and I'm just gonna read the first part 
and you can see where the mythos start to come into play. It says, in the 363rd year of Raharu and Maquette, who lived forever and forever, his majesty was in Taqens, and his soldiers were with him. The enemy did not conspire out against their Lord in the land, and it's called Uatet unto this day. It says, and Ra set out on an expedition in his boat, and his followers were with him, and he arrived at Utes Heru, which lay to the west of this Hespu, or Nome, or Septa, and to the east of the canal Pakenu, which is called, and then some is broken off to this day. And Heru Behudet was in the boat of Ra, and he said unto his father, Rahu. Ra, Heru, and Maket, I see that the enemies are conspiring against their Lord. Let they, uh, let you fear, let you fiery serpent gain the mastery over them. Then the majesty of Ra, Her, Hor, Hor, and Maket, I hate when they put Harmachis, har but it's there, said unto the divine Ka, O Heru, Behudet, O son of Ra, you exalted one who did proceed from me, overthrow you the enemies who are before thee straightway and Haru Behudet flew into the horizon in the form of the great winged disc for which reason he is called great lord of heaven unto this day did, did you understand where he came into the mythos and how you start to tell stories by the happenings in the sky was that not simple enough that was simple right that's one portion it's one portion Let's go back into the into the into the uh, into the book. It says he enters as the scarabus. It is as this scarabus that he enters. It is as this scarabus that he goes to the sky. That is to say, the form of copper rare, which is in the picture. That is what the text means. It happens that it is in this form in which he rises in the sky when he is strong that he goes towards the Dua, confronting the rebels. Uh-oh, brother. <laughs> so you can see it right there. You can see it right there. That is the first time on earth and primeval time, etc. So we read that part. Let's go further. Let's go to the other text. It says this. It says the first time on earth he, in the primeval time that he comes into existence, that is to say it was from it, it was in the form of Keperer that he began to go to the sky in primeval time. He at the first day in primeval time, the one in which he was completed at the beginning and again. So they're telling you that it happens over and over. Anyway, we're going to go to the rising of the sun text. And as you can see from the from right there. This story here was the same as that story there. Let's go forth. It says, the texts which are before her thigh. Remember the picture we're looking at, right? We're looking at Kepara right next to her thigh. You got the marshes behind her. You got Mu above her. And you got her buttocks and her vaginal portion in front of Kapara. Now, it says this. The life of the deacon, or the nemu, or the necheru, kinmu, together with ab, and the necheru sheta, is the life of Horus. We're not going to get into that right now. I'm not going to go too in depth into that. It says, the life of the deacon, kinmu, together with ab, and the deacon sheta, is the life of Heru. The rising of kinmu, together with ab and sheta, is the rising of Horus. So they're telling you those two necheru, when they rise, are like the rising of horse, actually those three natural. That is to say the place where Kinmu rises is in the Kad day, the place where Ab rises. Now, when we looked at the Dendera Stella the other day, Kinmu marks the place where Heru rises, doesn't he? Let me see if I can pull that picture up real quick for you. He marks the location where Heru rises in the sky. This is the, the mythos telling you where the sun rises at and what's going on there. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let 
me see if I can go into my, if I go here and I hit the desktop, I'll be having so many pictures. And I'll be doing these on the fly. Let's go. Let's see. Let's go to. Let's go here. I think we can see it. I think we can see it here. Ah, here we go. All right. So right there, you see this right here? You follow my arrow? That says Ken Moot. K N Moot. It's the it's the the M and the Duat symbol here. Ken Moot. And as he rises, here's Heru right here on his staff. The Ret Menka, right? He's right here. This is the sun rising on the Dendera Temple. And this is Ken Moot. And it says Ken Moot with Shittai and the other Neturu or the rising of Heru. Who are these two? All right, you know what it is. <laughs> Just keeping this simple. So you can understand the mythos and what's going on. When you understand the mythos and what's going on, you're able to explain the sky. Is that Brother Anthony in here with us today? Yes, and I'm here. Do I? Do I? Ooh. 18, 18. 300 and, 333 days into the helical, 31 days since. I'm always aware, my brother. I'm with you. Peace and blessings to the family. How are you, my brother? Good, family. Good. Do I? Do I? Did you? Uh, did you reach out to? Uh, I was asking because I see you. You pulled up the um the stele of the den the um <clears throat> star stele of Dendera. Did you reach out to Pata? I didn't get a chance to um call brother Pata yet. Okay, i was just asking because no. you know he always he always has pertinent information. With respect you know, he to that, he like to go in. He yeah. like to go in. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to get into that seventeen minutes real quick. You know, what I mean, according to, um, according and according to, from what I remember in my studies, you know, you have thirty five minutes every day that's unaccounted for, which we've described as the duat and the tuat. So you have seventeen minutes before, seventeen and a half, and seventeen minutes prior to the sunset. So I was just, you know, I was just. Picking up where you was going because it is very pertinent that we um really, really get to the time thing. And I'm glad that you actually reached out about that today. So I'm glad to sit in on that, my brother. Absolutely. We're gonna get to the time as well. We we definitely gonna um we're gonna cover a couple things concerning uh the stars uh and uh the dua, the description of it. And and I'm glad you mentioned those. Uh where did I leave off last? Let me see where I left off. We were talking about Kemu, Kemu, and you were speaking about the the will uh, or the uh, celestial calendar of Dendera, and you had that diagram up, right, where Heru rolls at. So That's we got correct. it from the text right here. It says, uh, "Let me see, behind punt, come back over here." He enters into to the scarabus. We covered the scarabus and how he's rising. We covered that mythos and how he appears in that mythos. Heru appears in the mythos of Heru Behudet and the rising of the sun. And then the life of the deacons. Yep, here we go. So <clears throat> it says, to the place of rising which Ra makes, the one which he makes, another version uh, that they also have. It says, and it goes around in the place of rising of Kenmu together with Ab and Shittah. It is the rising of Ra. That is to say, the place of rising which Kenmu makes together with Ab and Shittah is the place of rising where Ra makes. And you've seen on the Dendera temple, that's where he rose. That's 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 where the sun rises. And that's where you'll see the uh the symbols and they always, uh, when they make the sunrise, they always make it in a certain location. When they make uh, the body of noon, you know, or of Newt, you know that the west is her face. You know that the east is her hind part. So these are some of the markers you can start to do when you see us pull up the Stella of Newt and Seb and Shu in between. You'll start to understand what you're looking at. You'll start to understand how they saw the universe at night and at day but let's go forward this talks about uh 
This is kind of uh, 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 giving birth. It says, he opens his ball of clay. He swims in his redness. He opens when he sets, he swims in. And there's some broken off. And it goes, it says, it opens to the sky. It opens to the sky. That is to say the place in which Ra rises upwards from the dua, that from which he rises daily. And this is going to go into how a nature rule works and being at the door of dua and at the back door of the dua. But it says he sits on his cloth. He sits on his cloth. That is to say on the birth brick. That is to say he is accustomed to do it. He, there's some broken off, in the form of copper rare, and he assumes the form of the sun disk, which is spoken of, the one which is in the picture. It is the water of, that he makes, there's some broken off, if it is in the water that is customarily sat upon. So they're telling you right here that the likeness of, the likeness of, of, of a woman's menstrual cycle is the likeness of the the rising of the sun as it brings a red dew it's the likeness of birthing a child and heru as copper rare is birthed on the birth brick and the birth brick in particular he, it telling you is is kemet as he hits seb seb acts as that birth brick and the hand of asar in the part of the water is what pushes him forth Let's get into the part of the Sar. It says he is purified in the arms of his father, Asar. His father lives and he is glorious when he has put himself under him. So Asar's hand is pushing him forth. This is all by the entrance of the Dua. So when I'm on other uh, videos telling you the Dua starts at Asar, this is what they're telling you right now. Heru is in Asar's hand and he's pushing him forth. And the birthing of him in the morning with that red hue that you see in the sky is as Newt pushing him out, pushing him out, pushing Ra out of her uh, vaginal portions. Let's go further. It says, he is purified in the arms of his father, Asar. He is purified in the hands of his father, Asar. That is to say, he is accustomed to do it. It is the water from which he rises. He lives. He is glorious when his father has put himself under him. He lives. He is beautiful in his rising from it. That is to say, the water. So once again, they're recognizing the universe as a watery mass. And they're saying this in text G, plate 44. They say, the redness comes after birth. The redness comes after his birth. The redness comes after birth. The redness comes after birth. They say it four times. Just like when you say your prayers, they always say stuff four times. They said it four times. And then they say, it is in the color which comes in the sun disk at dawn that he, that is to say Ra, rises. His rays being upon the earth in the color named. Look at the picture. The red crown is that which is, re is red, the shred. So it's telling you, how the red crown got its name and what it signifies. It, rep it represents the birthing. The redness comes after his birth. The redness comes after birth. That's what they're saying about the red hue from the sun when it shines upon the earth, when he first rises in the birth. Um, my brothers, did you want to add anything in there? No, my brother, continue to build. You, you right. got, got the floor. You got the platform. I'm, so, I'm a sponge today. Call me SpongeBob. You heard? SpongeBob. <laughs> let me see. Let me see if if we got any questions in the in the in the chat. I ain't even looked at the chat. I'm sorry, chat. I said I was going to be better than that. Patasa Care, he right there. If you could send him the link, you could send send uh, our elder the link. Yes, indeed. I've been saying that you need to start paying attention in the chat. You don't never look at the chat. <laughs> Let's let's shout him out. Shout out to the brother Jador. What's up, my brother J Jador? Shout out to Co Cosmic Thought. Some of this. Shout out to Jalan Zakari. Shout out to Soul Power. All the brothers in the chat. My brother Titans TV is in the mix. So let's go a little further. 
The, this is the text which are before her thigh. And now we're going to go to text J. And then I'm going to skip a portion because I think that you should come into the temple if you want to know how our natural root works. But this is just a crash course today. You all know I just came from the gym. Here we go. It is from the Dua that the majesty of this nature goes forth in the Mesquite region that these stars go forth with him. He is reached in the Mesquet region. He was glorious in the arms of his father, Asar in Tawir. It's another name for Kemen. At the first time of his antiquity, he happens to withdraw to the sky in the hour of Shetep Ness. He is strong. It is from the Duat that the majesty of this Netcher goes forth and in the Mesquet region that these stars go forth with him. It is from the Duat that the Netcher rises, these stars rising with him in the Mesquet region in the it is the door of the dua. So what they're telling you is two things. When the sun rises and stars rise with the sun, there are seven generally. Um, those seven also disappear when the, when the sun sets and you can only see them uh, when, when the, you know, when the sun is gone, obviously we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. I'm kind of, jumping ahead let me let me get back to where i need to be at because i'm jumping ahead let me see let me grab my note let me see the the front of the dua is the mescat region you know the mescat it has so back on its back right the door of the dua is there heru was glorious in his father's arms this place is called tower where his father's arms are or his hand was when he pushed him forth he's really young and he's going forth in the morning to the light, to light up Seb, the earth. And he's going in the form of copper rock. Uh, basically, you can see, you know, the concept of dark matter because his father's hand is pushing him forth. That's what you're looking at right now. That's all I'm explaining is how the universe works and how they saw it. Um, the, uh, what did we explain the Seb dot? Yeah, we're, we're about to get to the, uh, to the calendar portion in just a second no honey in a minute it is from the duat that the majesty of this nature goes forth that this stars go forth. it is from the duat that the net rise, rise stars rising with that region it is the door of the duat he is reared in the mesquite region he is revivified in the mesquite region that is to say it is is strengthened it is strength for him he was glorious in the arms of his father, Asar and Tawir. He was beautiful in the hand of his father, Asar in the Duat. That is to say, it was in the Duat that he was. That is the water from which he rises. So we're about to get into a portion where it talks about the 70 days. And this correlates when the king passes away, that you stay in the Duat and you are cleansed. After those 70 days, on the 71st day, they begin your funeral. But this also has to do with your coffin text, and this also has to do with your pyramid text. When they talk about the burial of the king and how he rises, he's in front of the dua, and then he goes in for 70 days. They cleanse and purify him in the ampu chamber, and then on the 71st day, they start his funeral. It's about to get there. Um, it also correlates... When you hear it talk about the hours, and we're about to get into the to the hours, it's going to start talking about the book of gates, and basically the sun going through the process of what it goes through in the book of gates, Eru or Ra on his boat in the book of gates. But let's keep moving. Got to echo with something. Yeah, I think the brother might have to mute his uh, mic. He started echoing when he uh, came back on and then mute his mic. Uh oh, brother, hey, can you hit your mute button? Oh, it's good. There you go. Here we go. It says he was glorious in uh We read that part. It says the order comes that he withdraw toward mankind in the hour of Shetep Ness. It happens that he orders his withdrawal. Let's move to the other portion. And it says... Move up. It says towards mankind from the dua. 
in the hour of Shetep Ness. It is the ninth hour of the night. So when it mentions the hours, you see I just mentioned the ninth hour. That's when you go to the ninth hour of the Book of Duat. You can understand the sun's process at night from the process it goes through in the day. If it says uh, from the hour one, that's when you know the process of the Book of Gates when you go to that chapter and you can follow the process of the sun and you can understand what they're talking about during that particular hour. But it says in the ninth hour of the night. That is what it, the text, means. It happens that the book Gavet names the eighth gate of the Dua. So, like I said, you can pull out your book of Amduat and you can pull out your book of Gates. The book of Gates is the shortened form of the book, the Amduat. And you can see what the sun is supposedly going through through the sky as it travels through the sky. You can get the book of Acre, too. It goes in, uh, in the book of Acre also. Yeah, the book of Akir and uh, the book of the earths also discusses it as well. So there are several texts that this particular, uh, when, when the sun is in certain places in the sky and also at night when constellations are visible, that is discussing. And it's telling you which ones in particular by naming the hour. So it says, once again, it says, it happens that the book Gabet names the eighth gate of the Dua. The people who are in it enter Another explanation, he begins to go withdrawing towards mankind. That is to say, it is after, and there's some missing, that he rises. See the book of the five days of the year. And the five days of the year are the inter intercalary days, intercalate days, however you say it, uh, where we talk about the birthing of Asar, the elder Heru, uh, 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 Set, Aset, and Nebetet, in that order in the hour of Nest, the ninth hour of the night, that is to say the one in which he rises. His existence is great, his existence is great, which is his glowing, it exists in the lands. He causes it to exist in the lands, that is to say the glowing, the place where he causes it to exist is not named. His heart exists, his strength exists, he sees Seb or Geb, is he Ra when he goes forth? His heart exists. His strength exists. His heart exists. That is to say, he is strong against a pep. So you're listening to me tell you this from the text in Seti's tomb and in uh, Ramses the fourth tomb. And then you can open up your book of coming forth by day and see the text of him battling a pep. And this is basically when he's going through a particular part of the day. This is when he's rising in the day, when Heru goes against the rebels, as we read earlier in the uh, the legend of the Egyptian Natural of the gods. That's all it's telling you. That's all it's telling you. It says, he sees Geb, his sight is at the earth, when the rising which he makes is complete, his sight is as his rays on the earth. Simple stuff. This is not this is not rocket science, but this is the part that they try to mystify. They mystify a lot of this stuff, and you don't need to get mystical magical. You need to understand that they're explaining how the universe worked around them. And that's pretty much the gist of it. There. Um, let's go to two more parts. Let me see. This is uh, Duat stuff. This goes into a, how a nature works. We're not going to get into that. Let's go into the deacons real fast. It says, it says, the texts which are the ret heret of the prince whose hand is under the sky and it says, all these stars begin in the sky in our Ket the first, when Septa rises. Who do you always hear talk about Septa? Our brother Patasa Kerasar. And this is in the book Shin. It then Can I chime in, my brother, real quick? I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut the book. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you peep, if you peep when I um when you acknowledge me, I gave the star code, like I said, 333 days until which means that's the next time if we gauge our day one as july 25th 503 a.m is the helical rising in kemet 
if you gauge your day one according to what we can view the helical rising, that would be August 3rd at 7.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's funny that you brought up Ubin Septet or the rising of Septet because that is definitely something that we have venerated since we could even, you know, coagulate any ideology about the Ramesh and the uh, ancient Timarians. So I just wanted to add that real quick. Absolutely. We're about to talk about how they came up with the days. We basically, from watching these rise above the, the, the horizon. So it says, all these stars begin in the sky in the first of our ket when Sep dot rises. So understand, I'm reading from the text. It says the book of Shin, Edenu, Shin Edenu. That's another book of Jehuti, if you want to write that down. In the first of our ket at the rising of Sep dot, all these stars rise in the sky. That is to say, at the rising of Septot in the first of our cat, then there's a portion that's blank. It is the beginning of the year with Ra, in whom there is no alteration which he made in the path of the stars. So it mentions the path of the stars. It mentions the ecliptic that the sun goes upon. It says more about the ecliptic, but I'm not I'm not giving all that away today. And the book of Benin says, Septot, there are 18 stars after her and 18 stars before her, the, bin, the beginning of calling the stars. And when we talk about calling the stars, we have to get into how a natural rule works, and I'm not going to do that. But when we talk about the 18 before Sepdot, who is our set, and we talk about the 18 after Sepdot, how many is 18 plus 18? 36. 8 plus 8 is 6. Carry the 1. 36. How many sexes, sectors did they break the sky into? 36. What's your, <laughs> what's your zodiac? 36 sectors, huh? Each in sectors of 10. Each split up of the, the 36 sectors are broken into sectors of 10. Each one. So they're, they're giving you your zodiac right now. They're giving you the breakdown of the, the stars and how they broke it down. And we're going to get into that in a second. So it says, Pawi Duat, first hour, the fourth of Arquette, the 26th, and closed by the Duat, the third of Peret, the 16th, which is the birth, the second of Shemu, the 16th. So these are dates. They're breaking down dates and how. The star did this at this time, and then at this time, the star did that, right? But when we talk about Sep dot, there are 18 stars after her and 18 stars before her. We're talking about the year. We're talking about 18 before, 18 after. That's 36. So when you know that 36, you know the, the sectors of the sky that they broke up the sky into. So you start to know your zodiac from the ecliptical line that the sun passes through. Let's go a little further. It says, the way of calling every one of them, talking about the stars at the door of the Dua. The last part of the text is that according to the book of Seth, that's another book of Jehuti, write that down. I'm not going to give them all away, but there's some in here. On the third of Arquet, the 26th to the first of Peret, six, they are called. Opposite Kenmut, you know Kenmut, that's where, that's where Heru rises at the beginning of the year. <laughs> to them are they, these five stars, and they, they, they go into uh, stellar motion when they start to talk about uh, Pawi Duat. Uh, later on, but I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to skip over certain things because I don't want certain things to come out, but here we go. It says it happens that on the 4th of our cat, the 26th, it begins to do work. I'm talking about a natural rule doing work. That is to say it is the 10 days according to the book of Seth. That is to say a star dies and a star lives every decade of days blank which goes around in the year so they're telling you how the week is formed they're telling you that a star 
dies every 10 days, and then another star lives every 10 days. And when that happens, they formulate the week. And from formulating the week, they start to formulate the year. And from formulating the year, they start to formulate the other cycles. Now, I'm just going to give you some, some other knowledge that uh, you should know if you if you understand the, the year and what have you. So if if uh, it's basically the, the theory of stellar movement is given there. Uh, the Nimu chosen to do so, like I said, was Pawi pa Duat. And I'm not getting into too much. Pawi Duat represents the first hour and the first hour is at the back door of the Amduat. And when that star appears in the back of the Amduat, it begins to do its work over a 10 day cycle. And then it disappears under the horizon. Once it disappears under the horizon, another Nimu or another deacon or another Neturu pops up and it begins to do its work and it becomes the first hour and it starts to work. And that is how they made the 10 day cycle of days for the week. So you understand your week, right? So our set is the beginning of the year and at 18 or before her and 18 or after her showing the 36 sectors of the sky, um, a star dies. And when it dies, another star becomes what we call the first hour. And when that star becomes the first hour, in the back of the dua, it starts to do its work. And another star is in the weights right behind it. And that's what they're explaining. Kin Moot to them are they. So Kin Moot is here, then it disappears, then here comes them. And then them does his work, then he disappears. Here comes another natural that you'll see over the horizon for about a 10 day cycle. So they're explaining the sky in that fashion. Let's go to. Uh, another portion. Let's go to because I, I don't. We're going to skip most of that. Let me get that out of here. Let's go to sunset and night, real quick. Then we'll end it out in just a few. It says, "It is by her mouth." This is sunset and night. This is uh, plate forty nine. If you ever get the, if you ever go see Seti's temple. And if you go see Ramsey's temple, it's, it's pretty much cut up the same way. It says, by her mouth that the majesty of this nature enters within the duat. Afterwards, he goes forth and in, and in it, the sky, he travels. It's talking about the sun traveling through Newt's body. With him, these stars enter and with him, they go forth, hurrying to their places. So they disappear when he's visible. And then when he goes under the uh the when he sets they're in their places you can see them it is by her mouth that the majesty of this nature enters within the duat it is by her mouth that is to say the sky that the nature that is to say ra enters into the duat and then you can look at the picture and of course the picture we've shown that picture a few times but in case you forget in cases it slips out of your mind we'll show it again so you can get the visuals. Visuals are important. That's the visual. This is the setting by her mouth. This is the rising. This is when he's raging against the rebels. This is when it's beef. This is when it's a problem. You see it's by the vaginal portion. So as he reaches the sky and you see that sun do, that red horizon, that reddening of the sky in the morning, especially on the, the uh, Egyptian hills, it gets real red. No one has to, if, if you're in Egypt right now listening, I don't have to explain this to you because the hills get really red. If you've been to Kemet, you already know. This is Copper Rod when he's strong, when he's young. This is him as he starts to set like Bethel Day. Mother, sorry, I'm calm. I'm so sorry to cut your bill. Please excuse me. I know it's you know not tolerated, but I have the elder Patar Sika. Sorry, he called my line. Is there any way you can send him the link so he can join the rest of the show? Absolutely. I, I was saying send him the link if you can. 
that's the problem. I can't because uh, you sent me the link on Messenger and I can't copy it. I'm on my computer. My phone's dead, so I can't send it to his phone. If you don't mind, I'm so sorry. I have him on my personal phone right now. Okay. <laughs> so he was like, "How come I'm not on the panel? We send me the link." I was like, "Hold up, let me stop the whole thing real quick." Like, hold up. So if you could, brother, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut your bill, but if you could send him so he could join in, I would. I would greatly appreciate the elderly. Absolutely. We we're gonna finish these this portion. Uh, these these couple portions and then Saber Pata, I'm gonna send you the link so you can hop in and we're gonna get busy. We're gonna get even more busy. So this is uh Behudet right here. It's Kepara. This is Behudet as you go forth. You see Behudet here as well, right? So here he's raging against the rebels, and you see the marshes as well. We're gonna we're gonna get into the marshes in a minute. Because they called them the marshes a couple times already in the text. But um just so y'all can see. Let me let me cut back real quick. Gonna get back into this text real quick. And we'll finish out. Where am I at? I get lost. I get hit a lot, man. I don't get hit a lot, but I get hit in the gym, man. Y'all know what it is. And I come in here, try to do this on the fly. <laughs> Let me see. So it says the disc, which is at her mouth. Afterwards, he goes forth and in it, the sky, he travels from it. That is to say the dua, he goes forth in it. That is to say the sky, he travels again. So you see how the Ramesh speak. They double, they double talk. They say things twice. They say things three times to make sure you understand. It says, with him these stars enter, and with him they go forth. With him these stars set, and with him they rise. When their time of setting is complete, the period in which they are not customarily seen takes place. With him they customarily rise, with him they customarily set. So they told you that about three times right there. It is while hurrying to their places that these enter. It is while traveling to their places, that is to say, the ones which are for them, that these set. It is the place in which they do work. It happens that it is to receive others for them that some are accustomed to set. The book of Shed, that's another book of Jehudi, you might want to write down. Some come at night, others come at their hour when a star has gone to its place. House of the Pillars is the place where Ra is. It says that in the text. And like I said, you see Heru on the on the pillar rising at the Dendera temple at rules above on the pillar and in the temple it correlates wherever you go into the hyperstyle hall of one of the uh the uh uh per ox or to one of the the bigger areas like the Ramesseum that is where Ra is that is what's going on there uh, I heard some one of my scholar brothers call it penis no no <laughs> The pillar is not a penis. In fact, it is in the form of the Dejed symbol, the older Dejed symbol of the Sar. So it's the backbone of the Sar, as they mentioned to you. It's his arms, it's his hand, but it's in the form of his backbone. And it's in the form of the acacia tree that they cut down in Bucerus when our set found him in the mythos. Just so you know. Just so you know. Let's um Let's uh, let my brothers get on here so we can get busy. I'm going to get rid of the West End entrance of the Dua, which explains a lot of what I was saying. We'll get into that later. Let me just go to Geb and Newt's dispute, right? They call this portion the dramatic text. And this is kind of a summary of everything we just discussed. It says, it is to the boundaries of the sky that these stars travel outside her in the night when they shine and are seen it is within her that they travel in the day when they do not shine and are not seen with this nature they enter and with him they go forth with him they travel on the supports of shoe you see him lifting her up like this right resting at their places so they say shoe holds up the sky the wind basically holds up the sky the wind creates this intrepidable force etc etc and holds this the sky in its place after in the western horizon his majesty sets, they enter into her mouth in the place of her head in the west. She eats them. Seb quarrels with Newt, being angry with her because of eating. 
Her name is called Sal, who eats her piglets. Because she eats them, her father's shoe lifted her and supported her over himself, saying, let Geb beware, right? So you have Shu getting mad at Newt, or no, you have, I'm sorry, you have Geb or Seb getting mad at Newt because he's eating the stars. Remember what the eating of the stars looks like. It looks like the sun going into her mouth. Basically, it's the sun, it's the star setting below the horizon. They call that the eating of the stars by Newt. And they say, Seb gets mad at her, and so Shu lifts them up, lifts Newt up from Seb, because they're, they're arguing, they're having a quarrel, they're having a beef. And it says, let him not quarrel with her because she eats their young. They shall live, and they shall go forth from the place under her hind part in the east every day. So now they're describing what happens to food after you eat it. You eat it, and it comes out your hind part. That's what they're saying about the stars. That's all this is. Remember, ancient mythos is science. They're just explaining what happens to the stars as they travel through her body. They come and set in her mouth in the west as if she eats them, and then they rise again as if she defecates them out in the east where the sun rises and where the stars start to rise. That's it. This is ancient mythos personified. Myth is science in ancient Kemet. I've explained each portion to you. It says her hind part in the east every day as she gives birth to Ra daily. Her name is not called mother of the gods. It is called mother of the gods. Since their birth, it's not because of that. Not one among them falls. She's talking about the stars. All the stars are supported. Not one of them falls. So they're basically saying Seb is getting mad at her, but he doesn't need to because all these stars stay supported. She eats them and defecates them out. They're still there. They're going to do it again. They're going to come back daily. That's what they're saying in the mythos. Let's read the rest of the mythos. So I'm not just talking. Let's see. It says, the one which goes to the earth dies and enters the dua. It stops in the house of Seb, 70 days. It loses its impurity to the earth in 70 days. There is no speaking the name of the one loosening for 70 days. Remember, we talked about the Nasut dying and then going to the dua. And before they send him off with the funeral, they purify his body for 70 days and on the 71st day that's when they have his funeral that's when they say the hymns that's when etc 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 all right let's keep going it says there is no speaking the name of the one loosening for 70 days the name of living is not said to the one having loosened it sheds its impurities to the earth it is pure and it lives set there's some broken off then it says set they are pure they live and their heads are placed for them in the east it happens that one dies and another lives. So they're talking about the, the stars as we just described, right? We just covered that. It says one dies and another lives every decade of days, every 10 days. These are the head of the nature rule. It is in the East that they celebrate the first feast. The head of one is set to another one of them. Their evils fall to the earth and the souls go forth, which had fallen to earth. Their tears drop becoming fish, the Ramech. That's what the text says when you read the Medu. It says their tears drop, becoming fish. The life of a star begins in the lake. It goes forth from the water. It flies upwards out of the sea and out of the previous form. It is the life of the stars. They go forth from the Dua and they withdraw to the sky. Geb became the prince of the gods. Geb fought Nu. He commanded that they show their heads in the east the second time. Geb, he said to the Neturu, he said, put an end to your heads. And Jehudi commanded that they put an end to their heads. They lived and their showing heads happened. Their burials take place like those of men. 
Its duration in the dua indeed takes place. This is what is done by the dying. The souls go forth traveling in the sky at night. Their journeys to the boundaries of the sky have taken place by day. Those which do not rise in sight. When it is seen by the living, it is indeed a star which makes its journey and which shines forth in the sky in the hours of night and which sails the sky beautifully. This means its life is seen. A star which is brought out of it goes as they do. The moon of the second day is the feast of Haru. Now, summed up at the end, a discussion, a quarrel between Geb and New. It keeps going, but we don't need to go through the whole story. We don't need to go through the whole story. So you get the understanding that they're describing the universe and you got to tell a good story. And so they told that story. And as they told that story, they explained centripetal force. They explained dark matter. They explained dark energy. They, ex they explained stellar motion. They explained the orbits and the sun, et cetera, et cetera. They explained all of that. And they told it in story form. They explained the marshes. They explain Heru going to war with Set is like the sun rising, going against the rebels. Going against the pep, they said in the other story. That's what it's about. Um, I'm going to let my brothers chime in for a second while I go get Patah, Sakara, saw the link, and then we'll let Brother Patah get in. My brothers, the floor is yours. Go ahead, brother Kofi. Oh, Kofi. <laughs> go ahead, brother Ant, for a second. I'm gonna go grab Bob. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna take animation too. I'm 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 in the middle of getting the girls ready for bed. So go ahead, do your thing. I'm gonna when Pata jump on, I'll jump back again. All right. So give me a hot second. We're gonna grab Pata Sakar Asar real quick. I'm gonna send him the link. Get him the YouTube link. Let me see. Let me see if it's anything in the chat as well. Let me see. Absolutely. I see. I see my brother. Y'all got any questions in the chat? Go ahead and ask away. Let me get Brother Potosik here. I saw the link real quick. Let me see. I think I can just add him like this. Let me see. Got to be one of these. Just... Grab the link real quick. Kofi said his his girl came through. He had to he had to roll out, or his son did something. Let me put. My hotmail up real quick. Sign in. We're gonna get the brother the link. Let's see. got any any questions concerning you could throw them out now I mean I said deep <laughs> now where's my brother Patasa Kerasar let me pick him up Let me pull up one of his old emails and send him the link. Here we go. All 
All right, Saber Pata, here it come. Sent. <laughs> All right, so our brother, our brother got the link now. He should be hopping in in just a second. And while he pulls up, it's my goodies, y'all. Skipping a few portions. So just to kind of recap while our brother gets in, you know, we, we discussed the son's course. Um, as they, uh, there's a portion in here where they talk about side real time as well. Uh, and, and when, when the stars disappear and then reappear with the sun, uh, and they rise and set with the sun, uh, that's when you start to lead into the side real time. Basically, uh, if we saw the sun and the stars, uh, you know, basically a starry background, and then you can see the sun. If you can see them both at the same time, which you can't, uh, the constellations uh, would it would appear that the sun is traveling through the constellations throughout the, the parts of the day. Through the sky, it would just kind of tra travel through each constellation. And as they travel through the constellations, that's what you call side real time. So you know that we use not just a solar calendar, but we also had a side real calendar as they explain some of the explanations in there concerning uh, the sun's travel. Uh, I didn't go into a whole lot of it, but how a natural rule works, that's how you really know that, you know, we use side real time. When you talk about the 18 before I set and the 18 after I set, the 36 sectors and the sun traveling through each sector of the sky, that's how you know. They clearly understood side real time and that's that's how they began to make up the calendar. When they see a deacon disappear from the dua in the first hour and another take its place to become the first hour, that's how you know about the 10 day cycle of the week. And you know about the 10 day cycle that they break down and they say it, you know. So uh, they also use the solar calendar, you know. So when you look up these terms, you can just go to Google. Um, when you go to side real year, it's basically the orbital period of the earth around the sun, taking the stars as a reference frame. So the stars are the backdrop. The sun is traveling throughout the year. And you can see the sun appear. And then as it sets, you can see a different constellation be in the sky for about a month period of time. So they were able to develop a, a full year off of that. Um, side real month is uh, the time it takes uh, the moon to orbit around the earth with respect to the stars. So they understood that because they made the uh, the uh, the Asar story where Asar's um, body is torn apart and torn to pieces by set and then put together in the last 14 days by offset. So you can see all of that stuff, sweetheart. <laughs> when I'm doing a lecture, you call back. I'm doing a lecture, sweetheart. I call, I'll talk to you in a minute. Whatever. Kisses. Mwah. See, your girl will give you a hard time, won't she? Kisses, honey. I'll call you in a minute. <laughs> All right, back. So it looks like Sabu Patasa care as far as having a difficult time. Go back. This is a long one. This is a long read, but you really have to sit down on each portion, break it down. I'm not the most exciting every day, especially after, you know. So go back, break each portion down. Um, See if you can get a picture of the set and newt with the metal nature there, especially those of you who can read it, and start to break down each portion. And as you break those portions down, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see exactly what's going on. 
uh, Ramsey's the fourth. You can get his ceiling. I believe you can find most of this stuff on the internet. And then uh, Seti the first. And if you can't find it, then well, you can you can definitely find the pictures. The pictures aren't difficult to find. But if you can I chime in? You can find if you. I'm sorry to add on. If you go to the University of Rutgers, there um they have a website. You can just go in and you'll excuse me. University of Rutgers, Egyptology Archaeology Department. You can pull up a lot of the um facsimiles of primary sources, um that you would find um throughout the um, the world and also that you find in Kemp. So you definitely can go to University of Rutgers, Egyptology and Archaeology Department website, and you'll be able to find access some of the information. Definitely a good site. Absolutely. Now, what we broke down, you can clearly see this is science. You can clearly see this is the beginnings of astronomy. You can clearly see this is also where the Greeks started to build their astrology. Brother Ant, did you want to add anything in there? And send us send Patasa Karasar. What's up, man? I sent you the link already. What's going on, brother? I'm gonna have to call him and see what's going on. Stand by for me real quick. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna go into the chat real quick. Let me see who's in the chat. Observations of the natural world, my brother Sutek Karu. The thing with this is it's an understanding of others trying to enlighten. Uh to a to a degree, to a degree. But myth also uh gives you the explanation of what they're talking about as they broke down towards the end when they uh discuss the uh Geb and Newt argument. So absolutely. 324 hours of sunlight. I'm still baffled where the sun go. Um, the sun, well, I, th I thought that was explained, set in the west in Newt's mouth. So you shouldn't be that baffled by it because the picture showed you where the sun went, showed you in several places. The sun disappears in her mouth. Geb gets mad like, don't eat the children. I said, you piglet eater, don't eat the children. <laughs> That's part of the myth. Hello. And then it comes out in the east. And the sun is represented in a few forms in the myth. It's represented as a beetle by her knee. It's represented as the sun through her body. And then as it sets, it's, it's, it's represented as the winged sun disc. The strongest point. That clears that up for you, brother Anthony, in case you were lost during the presentation. Let's see what else is going on. Let's see who else has some information here. Let's see. So I was waiting for the link. I tune them high science. Absolutely. And the first science, you know, the science that uh, truly, truly breaks things down and how science uh, starts to form the elliptical uh, or the ecliptic. So, you know, watching the sun go through the patterns and hearing it in the mythos go through the pattern of the ecliptic and come back. Yeah, it, it definitely goes into that for sure. It doesn't set for three days in Alaska where I am. Well, if it doesn't set for three days in Alaska where you are, you're probably closer to the pole stars, huh? Where a lot of things don't set, do they? because you're at the top or at the bottom of the planet. So when you're in Alaska, as opposed to being in Africa or some of the other locations where they were, then certain things won't set. In fact, you have uh, you have night for more than one day, huh? You get night for a long time. Then you have sun for a long time as well, huh? Yeah, you get sunshine for a real long time, don't you? You know why? Because you're you're in a place you shouldn't be. Get back to Africa. Get out of there. <laughs> That's what you're doing in Alaska. You you did you vote for Sarah Palin as well, Anthony Fryer? You <laughs> Our brother Anthony asking good questions though. Very good questions. Um our match brothers didn't discover everything in science. So 
you know, it's not as if we can give them credit for every single thing, but they did break down uh, all our initial settings, all of our initial settings. And we got to say Sin and Moot's name without question. So uh, Sin and Moot, you know, pour some water for him tonight. Um, say by Patasic Patalia. Check, check your uh, check your chat. I just I'm uh, he's on my phone. I just sent you his email. I don't know if you have this one, but check your chat. I just send it to you. You sent me a new email. Let me check. Yeah, you got the phone away in you now. Let me send it over to him. Copy. Go to my email. New message. Paste. Grab the bottom. Hold on, let me grab the link again. Here's the link, copy, shoot back over here. Paste, send. All right, so our brother should be joining us in a second and we'll let him add some goodies to the flavor and you let's, let's shout out his calendar uh Seba Patasa Karasar does a calendar now Seba Patasa Karasar has a nine-day calendar but it, it doesn't even matter if you use nine days it matters that you you're in accordance like like I said the the Remetch have about four calendars that they use there's a side reel there's a solar and there's a lunar right which the, the 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 lunar is the civil calendar, so it deals with the holidays. So if you wanna, if you if you use nine days, because they were actually making another calendar, uh, as things came about, then by all means do so. You know, by all means do so and push what you have, because <clears throat> we need such to to be involved in astronomy. There go the brother, Imhotep's. In the Imhotep Seba Patasa Karasa. Juba, Juba, Seba, Anata Pupa Mahat. I'm a yield the floor to you. I'm going to let you go in. Just go in. Uh, Ubenefernetra. Uh, go in, brother Seba Patasa Karasa. I know you can't wait to get on this. This is this is your subject right here. So. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. We got you loud and clear. Okay. Do I? Do I to you? <laughs> yeah, you already know, man. I appreciate you letting me in on your platform, my people, because you know I respect you to the utmost, to the net to lose. Panatapuam Apupama Akramich, Yemotep, eating my greatness. Do I say, but do I, do I? Uh, we just went in. I know, I know you got to hear most of it. Um, and we're coming from the text in uh, Seti's, Seti the first tomb and uh, Ramesses the uh, fourth tomb. I'm getting, a, I'm getting, I'm getting a bad echo. Yes. Does it clear up when I close my mic off? Yes. But yes, yes, I hear you. I hear you. Yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yield the floor to you and let you go yes. in and, and put some put some cosmic. I'm hearing, I'm hearing two sounds, I'm hearing two videos, I'm hearing two stations. Uh -oh. I don't know. <laughs> well go in I so don't know. you know you be heard okay. you're only talking okay, now. So if we go into if we, can you hear me directly now or are you waiting to hear me on a talk? We can hear you, go in. Go in, Saber. Okay, you are already in a call. That's what happened. Okay, I was in a call with 
I was in a call with Siba Atef Temu Kweb, and that's why you're hearing this. Okay, here it is. It says live right now. Yeah, you live. We can hear you. Good to go. Okay, okay. All right. No one's... Okay, so. Okay, let me just cancel this out right here. Okay, so when we go into the Met. And we go on to his ceiling. Are you hearing me right now? Are you hearing me live now? Or is there a delay? Keep going live. Otherwise, I got to come off mute, and that's going to make a double. You sound clear to us. You probably sound double to you. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, when we recognize how we told time by our ancient Ramech, as you said before, there, there was three types of calendar systems. But each one of them was based upon the, upon the star subject. Because our star subject in Ra mm -hmm. does a binary dance. Does a binary dance, which takes every 1,461 years for it to conjunct into a helical rising. It happens twice. And this, and this, and this binary dance is symbolized in the Meduneta glyph mm -hmm. as the two fish grinding. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's um, again calling. Um, so the symbol for the fish, Pisces, when you put these two fishes together, it makes a two, it entwines two circles. This represents the binary dance of Subtit and Subtit and Ra. And this indicates that when you reach this constellation of Pisces, that we have made one complete orbit around the phenomenon of precession, which is 26,000 years. Now, to, to, to separate each, each of these calendars, or which we call it Ipet Heru, Ipet meaning measure, and Heru meaning day, to measure the day, or at my temple at the Teshe Para, the Holy House of Ra, we call it a Shabit, M Twa Heru Pama'at. Shabit means shadow, because when the sun casts its light upon any object, it creates a shadow. And if one is atomic, the other is subatomic. This is for those who are into the higher teachings of the esoteric and esoterical um, cosmic metaphors of your, of your um, manifestation into enlightenment. So with this understanding that it takes subtit, a sidereal calendar definition in, in, in Webster's dictionary means that the star subtit rolls upon the elliptic plane, traverses mm. and traverses. It traverses, mm. it traverses, the star returns to its original position in respect to the fixed stars is 8,766 hours. This is our geodite. Now with this mm. geodite, we can separate, with this geodite, we can separate each and every calendar and place it in harmony with Ma'at, with absolute accountability and star validation. Now, the calendar that we have today, which the comedic people mm. use, has, has 10 months, has 12 months in a year, and it has 30 days in each month. It has three weeks with 30 days. It's a lunar cycle calendar based upon the cycles of the moon, which in, my, in the calendar that I present, the ancient African indigenous primordial comedic Rossarian mm. so calendar in the Natalological Star timeline. And we have all three of these calendars. The original days of the week are uh, nine days in a week. We know there's nine days in a week because nine, because when they reformed the calendars, we know that when, when Julius Caesar reformed the calendar, we went from nine days to eight. We went from 11 months to 12. Then when Julius got assassinated, Augusta came, he became an August. We went from eight days to seven. We went from 11 months to 12. We know this because of uh, because of Dice in Latin means 10, and it's our 12th month, so on and so forth. Nove is nine, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth downward. But when you start to review and to reform and to, and to research the reforming of the calendar, you come up with 300, 754 BC or AUC, which is Ab Urbe Gotita. For those of you with a wireless device and want to check my data, go to first calendar reform. A-U-C, which is Ab Urbe Cotita, A-B-U-R-B-E Cotita, C-O-R-D-I-T-A. 
which means upon the founding of the city of Rome. This happened in 754 BC. We ruled this planet for more than 10 million years. We lost control only 2,000, add another 750 years, and we lost it 2,754 years ago. So you have to find out, so you have to figure out today is how is it that we, as the original rulers and monarchs of this planet who, who, have, who have embraced the immortality throughout this whole global planet, that now we cannot find our way back to our immortality and to our liberation and to our divine birthright, which is immortality. And the reason why is because they took our time from us. Because when they stole our time, they stole our cultural, cosmic, collective consciousness, spirituality, which is defined through our sacred mathematics and our divine, our divine, our divine science. Because there is no science without mathematics, no mathematics without science, and we need our cultural, cosmic, collectiveness, spirituality, consciousness to make it balance within my art and have absolute accountability and star validation. So the text, the, 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 the dissertation that I'm about to present to you is from the primordial temple discipline methodology. And my brother Siba Asa Aka has, has, the, has the methodology that, that can lead you right to this. He's showing you the, the, all the aspects that's in the Medunet, it's in the text, it's in the Amduat, it's in the, it's in the book of coming forth by day. For instance, for instance, when he said that Shu, Newton, Seb, and Shu were arguing, the reason why, when you see Newt the sky and Seb the earth, and when you see Shu holding them up, this is a mathematical equation that relates to our sacred science that applies directly to our cultural, cosmic, collectiveness, um, um, consciousness. Because when Shu separated, separate Seb from Newt, it means that there are only 360 days in a year. That means that we're moving under a 24 hour and 35 minute solar cycle. There's 35 minutes that's split between the Duat and the Twat every day, okay? Now Seb and Newt wanted to have children, but Ra said uh, the time has already been allotted for. There's no room for children right now. So that's why you see the picture of Shu separating Seb and Newt, when we deal with it in primordial temple discipline methodology and understanding our divine birthright, which is immortality, because this whole platform here today and every time that me and Asaka speak is to give you back your divine birthright, which is immortality. And to have the immortality, which is your rite of passage, you must, you must perform, I mean, which is your divine birthright, you must perform your rite of passage. And your rite of passage is to know how to tell time. So the first thing, just like Siba, um, Atef, Atef Temu Kweb, the divine, divine thought, um, the Siba of divine thought, when he first got on the show, he mentioned to you that he knew what day it was. Because any Naga, that's the difference between a Shemsu Heru and a Shemsu Set. This platform is for Shemsu Herus, okay? And a Shemsu Heru must know at all times where the star is when you rise and when you wake up, you must know where something is. Like today, today is, the, today is the 33rd day of the year after helical rising, which means mathematically that there's only 327 days remaining until Uben Subtit, Subtit Cyrus rising. Then you would say that today is the 33rd day of the first month of Jehuti, which means that it's the fourth day of Hapi, which means that it's the third day of the second month of the first season of Shemu. Then you would say phenomenon of precession, new age order, great golden age of Mahara Piyasa. This recognize, this is you addressing the ancestors and the elders and to the Netarus that you have a right to have the right to speech. Okay? And this can be demonstrated in any papyrus that you read. If you look at the, at the stream stella of, of Jehuti Mess or Thutmuses in front of Herukuti or Hamachis, or the Sphinx, or whichever one you want to call it, if you look at that Stella, and if you look at the Medunetta script, at the top of the script, on the set first, on the first register reading from right to left, he tells you what year it is. He tells you what year it is, where the star is at, and what year he took the throne. So that was the first thing that he had to utter out of his mouth in the Medunetta in order to prove to him to have the right to be a Nesubiti. So this is part of your rite of passage. So people say, I say, or or I need the ancestors for permission to speak. That is good for old time 1972 methodology into initiation. But today you have to recite to us where the star is. 
and how many days is going to be before the star returns for us to recognize you as the true Nesubiti. So anyways, now we know that there's 12 months in a year on, on a comedic calendar. We know there's four, three seasons with four months. Each month has 30 days. Three times four is 120, 120, 120 is 360. It's an agricultural calendar. This calendar was given to us by Ptolemy the first, Sotir, Serapi, September, Rob, Mary, Amen. How can I prove that? Just Google calendar reform. You'll see 754 BCE or AUC, Arbor Bay Gordita. Then you see the second calendar reform would be Ptolemy the first, Ptolemy the third, and Ptolemy the fifth, with the decree of Canopus one, two, and three. Then you know they had the decree, they had to make another calendar reform in 46 BC with Julius Caesar. That's the Julian calendar. Then they made one more re a calendar reform is 325. AD, which is the Council of Nicaea. And we know also that they had to do the last calendar reform was 1582 AD, which is the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar that is on your wall today. And the reason why they had to keep reforming the calendar is because it's a perpetual calendar and it's based upon the cycles of the moon. And any calendar that has 30 days in a month means that every 130 years, one unearned day is added to the calendar. Now, you're not going to see it in your lifetime, and your son and your next descendant is not going to see it. But 400 years later, a day is going to be coming two days, and now you come up 700 years later, the sun doesn't line up with the spring equinox, meaning that the sun drifts. And this means that if you plant your crops at the wrong time, then the population is going to starve. This is why they had to keep reforming the calendar, or they would have never kept or they would have never reformed it because they want to keep us sleeping. So they Hellenized us. So once we became Hellenized, we became lobotomized. Try Googling that word. Don't take your own experience on what lobotomized means. Google it. It's a total disconnection, electromagnetic disconnection from your pineal gland to your brain, to your chakras. You've been disconnected from the cosmic forces that allow you love, guidance, and protection through the daily experiences of ponderable matter. That's why they took time away from us. That's why the first thing you do when you hang out with your boy, say, yo, what's up, man? What's up? What time is it? Everybody wants to know what time it is because that is our connection to our spiritual, our cultural, our cultural cosmic collective consciousness spirituality we had no religion religion is used to impose and to subjugate us into mental incarceration we had a cultural cosmic collective cosmic um, consciousness spirituality and we had it with the sacred science and the divine mathematics with star validation and absolute accountability so let's just relate to this time part again when you woke up this morning how was it that you didn't know how to regain your, your divine place on this planet as the true Naga, the true Shemsu Abu, the true Nesubiti, the monarchs of the universe? How is it? Because they've been playing chess with us for 3,000 years. They've been having us in mental subjugation. They moved, they moved the center of the world landmass to Greenwich, England. When you look at your watch, if you got a watch on your arm, you've been Hellenized and lobotomized because 52 parallels north of the equator is Greenwich, England, which is GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, and UTC, Universal Time Coordinate. Don't believe me? Just look at the watch on your arm. Okay? Now, next thing you do is you look up and you look at that calendar. You look at that Gregorian calendar. That's two strikes against you. They disconnected you from your cosmic invisible umbilical cord or the cosmic forces that allow you love, guidance, and protection through the daily experience of Pondable Matter. At the moment that you woke up, every day that you woke up, you looked at that calendar, and that is what placing you into mental incarceration because you don't know what time it is, and he's disconnecting you from the cosmic forces. This is why it's important for you to learn how to tell true Ma'atian time. So the three movements of the, of the earth are, it rotates on its axis, it revolves around the sun, and it's tilted 23 and a half degrees from vertical which means that it wobbles. One wobble, one complete wobble is 26,000 years, okay? The three dimensions of time, daily time, yearly time, and great year time, okay? So now, if you don't understand these things, it's because you're under a lunar cycle calendar and you got a watch on your arm with UTC and GMT. So what we're here to do on this platform is to bring back your cultural, spiritual, collective consciousness, spirituality, which was our original primordial belief system by uh, by applying 
the sacred science and the divine mathematics. Don't mind me when I talk fast because I'm just, I know we're, 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 we're due for some time, but I speak at light speed. Breath, yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> Keep going but, there, Table. Keep going there. Okay. So now, so once you understand that they reformed the calendar and that Ptolemy left us with Ptolemy the first, Sotir, Serapi, Septemra, Mary Amen left us with that lunar cycle calendar that the comedic people use today. I presented the, my calendar for my temple to every Siva on the, that we know, and only a handful has has embraced it. Okay. So I'm kind of leery and kind of not feeling the love, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to make sure that I make this, this mathematical equation and expose it to my Ramets, to my people, and let them figure it out. Let them place it on the scale. So once you understand that there are nine days in a week, of course there's nine days a week. He just told you there's 36 deacons. Nine times four is 36. 36 times 10 is 360. So what the, what the, where, where in lies the misconception is the 20, is the 35 minutes that exists between the duat and the twat. The Greeks couldn't understand it. The Romans couldn't understand it. Nebuchadnezzar, none of the foreign invaders could understand it. Okay, that's why they imposed the lunar cycle calendar because all they wanted to do was feed us. All you can do with a lunar cycle calendar is you can you can regulate the now. You know when the now is going to end our date, 90 days to end our date, 90 days to recede. You know the woman's menstrual cycle. You know the birth and gestation. And you know the high and low tides. Okay, and it's an agricultural calendar. All they wanted to do was make sure that they could feed us so they could keep stripping us of our melanin, of our spirituality. Okay, but our... Mel our spirituality lies with the stars okay so now we know that there's nine days in a week now if we go to the tomb of settlement for my for your primary primary prim primary source the chief mortuary temple of, of uh, heshesep was done by settlement underneath her on the behind on the side of her temple you see his tomb inside his tomb if you look on the ceiling you'll see tawa worked in the middle with a big spike pointing to orion and behind Tawar Wirt, you'll see nine deities personified with sun disc on their head. And the number one deity in front behind him, or her, I mean Tawar Wirt, mm -hmm. or, 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 or Tawar Wirt, or Apet, whichever yeah. Medunetta class you come from, you would see nine deities with personified with solar disc. And the first name is Ast. The next name you'll see, it'll say Mesta, Hapi, Twamotep, and Kwebsenuf. And the next four are miscellaneous, which was un unlegible. All I did was I took it and I looked at it in the eyes of our most primordial, pre, pre, uh, pre our most earliest ancient African indigenous primordial indigenous ancestors. And when they looked at the sky, the most powerful force in the sky was Ra. So it was Ra's day. Even that day remains the day. The first day is Sunday. And as you move from the sun towards the earth, the next day is the day of the moon, which is Monday. It's still African. Okay? Now, when you get from the moon, you're moving towards us. We're on the earth. The next day is the day of Seb, which the Romans called Twi, which is the Roman goddess of vegetation. So they move from Twi, which is Tuesday, and it goes... It goes, Tuesday is Matas in Spanish, which is Mars, because they related on a planetary um, system, okay? Mercules is Wednesday. Wednesday is Woden. Woden is Odin, because they went to Scandinavia, to the Norwegians, to the Vikings, and they got Thor, I mean, Woden, which is Wednesday, which is Mercules, and Mercules becomes Mercury. Then you have Thor. Thor is Thursday, and Thursday is Webby's in Spanish, because all we know is Greek and Latin. OK, because it's a puzzle. you got to put the puzzle together. We're supposed to be scholars and detectives <coughs> and putting in the research. But they've already been ready for you. They switch the etymology. They switch the vowels. All you have to do is relate to your most primordial tech, um, primordial indigenous cultural spirituality, which is the concept of self-creation. This is what they don't teach you. This is what we teach you here at Hek, Heknu Nechir and at the Temple of Teshapara. We teach you of the concept of self-creation. So once we get past this atomic level and understand how to tell time, then we can go into the Zeptepi and understand your origins because you can't understand who you are or yourself without understanding the concept of self-creation. But let's finish these days of the week before I drift. So we got Huevis. Huevis is Thursday. Thursdays is Huevis is Jupiter. Then you got Frigga. 
trigger is Friday, you're going back to Rome. Because Rome is the Roman goddess of uh, conjunctural merriment. You know, she hangs with Bacchus. Bacchus is the guy in Rome with the grapes on his head. Everybody gets drunk and they celebrate Frigga. Frigga means Friday. And Friday in Spanish is Venus, which is Venus. And of course, we got Sabado, which is Saturn. Okay, this is where the names of the days of the week came from, which has no verb, no meaning upon your presence or being or purpose or function as a Naga, as a Shemsuru, as a Nesabiti. The names of the days and the original days of the week are Ra, Jehuti, which is the sun to the moon. Now you come to the earth. It's Seb, not Geb, not Keb. If you say Geb, that means you're from you're from bulging birches. You're from um, God in a signless. That means you've been scholarized and Hellenized and you've been lobotomized. But when you say Seb, Seb means solid in Meduneta. And if you spell it backwards, it's best. And best means fire. Because inside the ball, inside the earth, there's a ball of fire. This is how the Meduneta works. It's like Bata. Bata means the door. But if you turn around backwards, it's Hotep. Hotep means peace. And Bata is the destructive force in nature because when the creator spoke his name as a word of power, we went from energy, thought, feeling, and non-motion to energy, thought, feeling, and motion. This was the beginning of the, the beginning, beginning of the origins of existence and the development of the universe or the expanding universe. But let's maintain our conversation to the names of the week. Okay. So we know that we know that when you say so we know Seb is the third day. Now, when you're on Seb, you're on the earth. You take a look to the left and take a look to the right. What are you going to see? You're going to see nature, mother nature, which we call Ost. So Ost becomes the fourth day. Now, after us, when you look to the left, you look to the right, you have to orientate yourself to the celestial environment. And so we have the four children of Heru, which is Mesta, Hapi, Tuamotep, and Questenov, which becomes east, west, north, and south, which becomes the four pillars of Pet, which becomes the four elements. And now it's all beginning to make sense. Hello, did I lose you? No, nope, we're still here with you. I'm here, oh, see, Bob. We're here. Continue. Did anybody want to say anything, or can I still carry on? Because I, I mean, you know, I'm just trying to help. I'm only here to compliment my Siba Asaka. I'm only here as a as a as a cornerstone of this great giant new melanated pyramid that we're building. I'm just a humble servant of the light. That's right. I'm just throwing up a few pictures. You can see in these pictures uh, what he's describing right now. If we um. We'll start at the bottom just because the, the top might confuse some. Uh, you have, uh, we'll just read it right here. This is uh, Dua Mutef, which is right. down here with the ampoule head. This is Kabesanuf, Heru right. head. This is right. Sia, and this is Heru. This is Aset, right? This, right. These I, wait, you, you in the tomb of Senumet? Yeah, I just pulled up uh, one of my pictures. I ain't even. Okay, I'm good, like, good, good, great, great. Great, that's good. Because so, I, 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 I'm not, I, I haven't got the visual context here. I'm all on audio right now, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm illiterate, Belvy. I'm computer illiterate. I'm in the Stone Age over here, but I'm moving up. I'm moving up though. But yes, exactly. As I'm talking about the days of the week, you can see how it was reflected inside the tomb of Sentiment, which is 18th Dynasty Kemet. But I hate to use them words. I hate to use that timeline. Okay, because the whole timeline is, has been. It's been lied to. His story, we're not even dealing with history. We're dealing with our story. We're dealing with our story, which represents the masculine and the feminine. Okay? Because if you understand our concept of creation and uh, the Zeptepi, you would know about the trinities. There are many trinities because of our movement through each and every sign of the zodiac. Every sign is 2,160 years. And there's 12 signs, 12 times 2 is 21, and 100 is 25, it comes out to 26,000 years. But what makes it so special right now is that we are living and have lived into two great golden age. Because on 2012, 2012, December 21st, on the winter solstice, the constellation of Pisces with the ring at the top, if anybody's familiar with the constellation of Pisces, fell below the horizon which meant that we are no longer in the age of Pisces. And if we look 23 and a half degrees from horizontal, just like at 23 and a half degrees from vertical, the earth wobbles. If you're standing on the, on the ground, on the, on the terrain, and you look up 23 and a half degrees, whatever constellation is in the sky is what constellation mm -hmm. or what age that we're in. This is Same why bar. every megalithic... Same yes. bar. 
I'm gonna interject real quick. There yeah. is a portion of time that's transitional, which sometimes takes about 50 years, sometimes a little more. So because sometimes the, the uh, I believe it's Aquarius still pops up, I say we're still in the transitional stage. But they call that the cusp. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's the cusp, but yes. But if you look, right, but that 50 years has already passed also. We know that it's passed because through, through, through the cosmic forces that allow us love, guidance, and protection through the daily experiences of ponderable matter, meaning you can look out there with your eye on March 21st on a Gregorian calendar, and you look to the east mm -hmm. just before the sun rises, and you will not see the ring of the top of Pisces nowhere visible. So that 50 years um, 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 hiatus phase that you're talking about has passed also. We are truly within the age of Ma'at Hapiasa. We do not call it Aquarius because we know that Aquarius is an air sign, but it's a water bearer. So in order for us to interpret it back into our, because the temple of Z the temple of Dendra, what I did was, I kept the 12 cherubians that are on or that surrounded, which represents the 24 hours of the day because there's 24 hands holding up. The 12 cherubians represent the 24 hands that hold up the spherical calendar. Damn. And I took the inner, and I took the inner, inner part of the zodiac, which has the constellation of where it lines up to the constellation of Pisces 26,000 years ago. I kept that, but everything else I threw away. That's a Greek calendar. That calendar is a is a is a is a is a hot soup of Babylonian, Mesopotamian, of Persian, of Babylonian. You got Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. You got all of these influences, which which Ptolemy. This is that's a Ptolemaic calendar, okay? But it's a it's a remake of an older, more primordial African indigenous Naga calendar. He just corrupted that calendar because you can see it within the rings behind the extra rings behind that procession that moves around the 26,000 year cycle. Some of you might not be able to see it now, but you'll be able to see it pretty soon. So what I did was I took our anything that I seen that had any type of col colonial investment into it, anything that was touched by or corrupted or plagiarized or anything that could be regurgitated back to us in an unholy manner, to keep us from receiving our divine birthright, I threw that shit out the window. Excuse my language. I don't want to digress here, okay? But what I did was I replaced it with that which was stolen from us. So there's 26,000 years in each great age. So the first age is the age of Aquarius because we know that the 26,000-year cycle ended in the great golden age of Pisces, which we just left right now. We just entered into the great age. Pisces is also the age of Uncle Set. We know it's the age of Uncle Set because we went into mental, physical, spiritual, subjugated slavery. We went into the most excruciating pain and suffering that a human being could ever go through for the last 3,000 years. Now, Uncle Set was only supposed to rule this planet for 2,160 years. This is called the purpose, function, and law of the order of existence. But what happened was this time around, on this dance around, on this waltz around, Uncle Set didn't want to give up the time. So he took time from us. So the reason we're not ruling the planet now is because nobody knows how to tell time. Okay? So if you don't know how to tell time, I wouldn't give the planet back to you either. You don't deserve it, okay? But your ancestors did not mean to let you down. They left it in Medunetta. They left the scripts in sim symbolism. They left it in esoteric and esoteric cosmic metaphors that you're able to be able to see and to, and to comprehend that which was once un uncomprehensible. But because of your livid or your diet, because you're eating the wrong foods, you're on the wrong frequencies, which produce the wrong vibrations in which you cannot become in tune to be able to see these things. So first you have to change your diet because the first thing you do when you enter into the halls of double right and double truth where the soul is purged of all sins and where you see the faces of all the netarus and pronounce the words, the, you pronounce the usa medu nefer hekau, which means the great divine words of power or hekau for short, you would say anuk, Anuk Abet Kweb, Anuk Abet Kweb, Anuk Pert Hotep, Anuk Pert Hotep. I am pure, I, I am pure, I come in peace, I come in peace. 
This is the first thing you do when you come into the temple. So don't think you could come into the temple eating a hamburger coming out of McDonald's. Don't think you could go down to Popeye's and then walk into the temple. It doesn't work like that. Okay? So this is why we have the Heknu Nechia. We have Asaka to show you how to enter in the temple. This is why he doesn't give you everything all at one time because you don't, you, your body is not ready to receive this information because you're on the wrong frequencies and vibrations. And in order to, in order to have your first day, because that's what we're here for, immortality. But to receive immortality, you have to have your first day. Many of our ancestors have went their lifetime and never had their first day because we was living as injured humanity, mental, physical, spiritual, subjugated slave. We've been Hellenized and lobotomized. Can you imagine waking up lobotomized? That's what you're waking up every day. If you don't have this calendar or this ipetru on your wall for your children, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't care about it, leave it for your children, leave it for the next generation because you've been lobotomized so much. But if you're tuned into this station right now, there's a reason for it. There's a reason why you're listening to Asaka and Hekmu Nechia, because this is, a spiritual, this is a spiritual platform. This is where we come to, to receive these frequencies, to receive these vibrations, so that we can once again put the crown of the Atef crown upon our heads again. But you must learn how to tell time. Everybody knows, not even, not even the United States of America uses GMT and UTC. Military time uses Zulu time. The North Koreans already said they're no longer going to use GMT and UTC because that's for the niggas. That's for slavery. Everybody knows that everybody's in cahoots to keep us black nagas, us black nesubitis, our black sibas and sibats and mutnatats, the great queen mother goddesses, the immortal ones of Ma'at cherish. It's used to keep us down into a state of dormancy so that it maintains our pineal gland is sleeping, our chakras are dormant. That's why they lobotomize you. And you're lobotomized every day. And then you give it to your children. Yeah, you say to your son, what day? So oh, today's Monday. I got to go to school. As soon as you said Monday out your mouth, you become contraband. Contraband means black people conditioning black people into mental, physical, spiritual, subjugated slavery. He doesn't even have to do it to us. He doesn't have to beat us every day to make us slaves. We're already trained to make us own, own self slaves, to make our children slaves and to kill each other. Okay? So now, it all comes down to understanding how to tell time. So when he's telling you the story of Shu and Tefnut, when he's telling you the story of Seb and Newt and Shu holding up Seb, holding up Newt and separating Seb, is because Seb, the only thing that separates the sky from the earth is light. Because when the sun sets in the evening, when Atu Ra sets in Amenti, in the Duat, I mean in the Twat, where does the sky go? I don't see the sky no more. I see stars up there. But in the morning, in the duat, in the dawn, here comes the sky again. So what is it that separates the sky from the earth? And that's light. So when the sky and the earth comes down and up and down, up and down, that's Newton Seb making love. So eventually they wanted to have children. But Ra said only within the appointed allotment of time could life forms be allowed. So he asked his longtime friend and companion, Jehuti, to work the numbers. And Jehuti devised a way of knowing that if he could get a control of the 35 minutes that's left over in every day, he could finagle the bangle and let Shu and, and Tefnut, Shu and I mean, and let Seb and Newt have children. So Shu, Seb, and so Jehuti in the mythos, Jehuti waged with Ra, because Ra needed someone to name all the forms of life which he'd allowed to evolve, because he was beginning to become old from the billions and billions of years of existence. And and he needed someone to name each and every day. Mm. Saber, Saber just went and shut a mouthful on y'all. Y'all not ready. <laughs> They're not ready? They're not ready? They went to sleep they on me? You gotta be ready. No, they didn't go to sleep on that. You gotta be ready because it's, it's very simple. The mythos in ancient Kemet will show the science, just like we did today. Okay. Just exactly. like he broke it down now, just like the brother had the question about what if I'm in Alaska, it means you're closer to the pole stars. So just like the the uh, the the never resting stars, as we call them, they don't yeah. set. They always see them. Just like right. you always see six months of dark, 
six months of sunlight because you're right. closer to the pole star just like you always will see polaris right so it changes and our ancestors saw thuban yes and there are pyramids <laughs> and <know>. temples in <laughs> uh, in north america in alaska that are aligned to that time system exactly we have pyramids and, and ancient megalithic monuments pyramids all over the world on every mountain on and under every ocean on every landmass that's when they're all orientated the northern star shaft of the great pyramid points to polaris to the nether never setting stars polaris vega theban and 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 vega uh, theban draco okay these are the circumpolar stars and what this means that we know where we're located on the galactic elliptic plane of our quasi the milky way galaxy and we confirm this on the gregorian calendar on march 21st on the spring equinox when you see that constellation that rises before the sun which is the first helical rising so some people only know of the helical rising of the ren pet which is on on july 25th but let's take the word again the helical rising on july 25th of the ren pet when the earth makes one complete revolution of the sun and Meduneta, how does that make sense? How do you make sense out of Ren and Pet and get New Year's? You can't, unless you take Ren, which is the mouth of the water sign. Can you still hear me? I hear something go down. Hello. I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay. okay. So We're if here. you see the what if you see the water sign, if you see the mouth in the water sign, it means Ren. Ren means name. So you have to take the end at the bottom and put it on top of the mouth and it becomes nerve. Nerve becomes energy. Then you take pet, which means the sky, and you turn that around and you got TP, which means tep, which means first. I mean, which means time, right? Like zeptepi, right? So now you're able to take these four, four, four translations or reliterizations and you add it to this concept. And now it begins to make sense if you apply it to the concept of self-creation. Because if you're not applying this, this trend of thought, this Ma'atian thought of Macharu to the concept of self-creation, then you're nothing more than what John Henry Clark says, another well-dressed Roman and Greek. You're just another thug, another hotel pimp, okay? You have to be able to place it within the order of existence. And, and our let's not wig wearers. Can't forget the wig wearers. And the wig wearers, right. You become a wig wearer. I didn't want to digress. I could go into a lot of names of digression, but I didn't want to digress too far. <laughs> but anyways, we must understand the concept of self-creation. It's like, so when you understand the concept of self-creation, Brother Siba, Siba Asaka was telling you about how the universe was related to Kepra, and that's because Kepra is the beetle with the sun disc on his head, and Kepra in Meduneta means to evolve, the evolve of evolution. But if you don't know how to apply the concept of self-creation, you're only getting a, con a, a partial comprehension of what he's saying. So in Primordial Temple dictates that if you understand the concept of self-creation, you would know that the creator, who his name is unknown because his name is how he came into existence. So anybody that knows the name of their creator tells you that it's a false pretense or religion or concept because no one knows his name because his name is how he came into being. We call him Nebatesha. And I call him in my temple Ra Nebatesha Ra. Okay? Because Neb means Lord, Tesha means holy, and Ur means great. And then we put Ra at the front and Ra at the back because Ra is the light, and we know the light has a mirrored reflection, which is radiation. So now we understand subatomic energy and atomic energy. Now you're beginning to understand the concept of self-creation. Now you take Ra Nebateshra has four attributes of manifestation. His four attributes are temu, to think, thought, planned, which means mentalism, which is which is related directly to the to the scientific term of electromagnetism because there are four primordial energy forces mm -hmm. in science. Electromagnetism, weak force, strong force, and gravity. So if you cannot relate the science aspect to our cultural spirituality and to the mathematics G, I, J, comma, J equals zero, then we're just another Greek and another Roman and another wig wearer. We're just another well-dressed thugs trying to pimp our people into more slavery so that we can make some money so that we can do what we want to do. All that is past. All that pimping and hotel pimping is done. Heck, new net chair will make sure of that. Okay, you could come up here with this godness sign list 
and think that you know Medunetta when you don't know nothing. I studied God and Assignless when I was a baby. I grew up in the temple. But you must learn God and Assignless to understand your bilaterals, trilaterals, your unilaterals, your phonetic values, your determinatives. You must understand to be familiarized mm -hmm. with the Medunetta text. Mm -hmm. The Medunetta text so that you can begin to comprehend it. So you first you have to acclimate yourself and then you could gravitate yourself just like my Ipeteru Shabitem Tuarupama. I took the Gregorian calendar and I superimposed it right on top of our calendar because it's just a vague, it's just a plagiarized version of our African calendar. They stole it from us. So it was easy for me to put the Gregorian calendar right on top of it because they stole it from us. But their Gregorian calendar is perpetual. Meaning if January the 1st is on the Monday, that means January 1st next year is on a Tuesday, and next year is on a Wednesday, and next year is on a Thursday, but the year after that, it jumps to freaking Saturday because they got a leap year. So yes, this I means mean. that the star, that means that the star that was in the sky at your birth, on your birthday, seven years from now, is not in the sky. So he immediately disconnected you from the star of your birth and the star of your transition from the day you was born. This is how heavy this game is. This is chess, this isn't checkers. You're at the casino playing playing poker with a deck of Uno cards. No, no, no. This is, Senate. this is Senate. This is this is deeper than chess. This is Senate. This is deeper than chess. This is Senate. Yes. <laughs> Thank hey, you brother, for the correction. Yeah, yeah, question, Thank brother. you. Thank you, Say my Siba. Say bye. Thank you very much. Dua. Dua. So brother, you have to understand hold on, hold on, when you're playing.